Welcome. I'm sure all of you know something about the Mayan civilization in Mesoamerica. You may even be descended from them. But I'm here to tell you that we know next to nothing about the details of the Mayans. Thousands upon thousands of texts, hieroglyphs, and entire cities were completely destroyed when the Spanish conquistadors took over. The Mayan civilization was already in a period of major decline and hardship. Many other cities were already abandoned when the Spanish arrived, and we're not completely sure as to why. Most historians will tell you they had an uptick in disease, war, and local conflict that wiped them out. But the theories range everywhere from that they returned to inner earth, to they were taken by gods or aliens. But there's little evidence to tell us the details of what actually took place. Partly because of the burning of their texts. What we do know about the Mayans is based off the few texts and hieroglyphs that did survive, what we can find in the archaeological record, stories from their descendants, and what we can gather about them from similar people like the Toltecs, Aztecs, or Olmecs. These might have possibly been the most fascinating people on Earth. They were so advanced for their time, while the entire continent of Europe was in the Dark Ages, the Mayans were making advancement in science, mathematics, astronomy, language, and culture. The Mayans had a calendar more accurate than our modern calendar that we use today. They had such a precise grasp on the movements of the heavenly bodies that they didn't even need to include a leap year or any sort of adjustments like that. They tell us the Mayan calendar correction was ten thousandths of a day more exact than the standard calendar the world uses today. And these people lived by that calendar, and by the stars and celestial happenings it tracked. A way of life that is suspiciously common among ancient cultures across the entire world. We also know that at the same time they were a brutal warlike people who practiced human sacrifice and other grotesque rituals. But we know next to nothing of their histories, origin, and traditions. The conquistador Hernán Cortés first made contact with the Mayans in 1525. But Mayans did not fall to the Spanish so easy. These people were fierce warriors and experts in their terrain. All they had for weaponry were obsidian clubs, small bows, and obsidian spears. And their armor was made of cloth. The Spanish were armed with crossbows, war horses, muskets, and flintlocks and had swords made of steel rather than obsidian, but the Mayans still held them back until the year 1697 when they were finally subdued. It was only a matter of time before the conquistadors with their guns and steel took them out. Disease also played a major role, especially smallpox. The Mayans had no immunity to European diseases so they were completely devastated by them, but they still managed to fight off the Spanish for over 150 years. During this prolonged conflict, the Spanish Catholic monks were attempting to convert the people. These monks had extreme views and believed if a person refuses the teachings of Catholicism, then they should be put to death, as we saw with the Spanish Inquisition during the same time period. Instead of killing off all the Mayans, these monks and conquistadors took it upon themselves to completely eradicate all traces of their religion, and they almost succeeded. In the mid-1500s, a bishop by the name of Diego de Londa hosted huge book-burning events in Mayan cities and convinced the people to dispose of their sacred texts. Many other monks would follow this bishop's lead and host similar events and deface artifacts and ruins. They were so thorough in their endeavor that only four Mayan texts have survived to this day. How, you ask? We don't even know. The monks were sure they destroyed every trace of the Mayan religion, but three texts turn up in museums around the world in centuries to come, and one was found left behind in Mexico. These texts were likely smuggled away by some holdout monks as several of them wrote about regretting their actions. Friar Bartolome de las Casas wrote that he lamented when he found out that such books were destroyed. These books were seen by our clergy and even I saw part of those books that were burned by the monks, apparently because they thought they might harm the Indians in matters concerning religion, since at that time they were in the beginning of their conversion. Every trace of the Mayans' written history was completely gone until 100 years later in 1739, when the Dresden Museum acquired the first Mayan codex from a private collector. Then later in 1859, the Paris Codex was discovered, and later in the 1960s, the Madrid Codex and the Mexican Codex were discovered. These private collectors most likely purchased these priceless codices from clergy or family who were passed down these books for generations, hiding them away from the Catholic Church who wanted them erased. But why did the Catholics have such a vendetta against these texts? They would perform the same practice when subduing other indigenous peoples too, such as in Africa, but for what purpose? Yes, they were trying to convert the people and force them into Christianity, but could there be another reason as well? Was there something in these texts that was threatening to their worldview? Something they didn't want future generations to know? Secret history is possibly going back tens of thousands of years. The Mayan calendar cycles goes all the way back to 3000 BC. Could the lost histories go that far back too? Or maybe even to a cycle before that? We have no way of knowing although the texts that we do have give us quite the insight into their way of thinking. 
and we can make many connections to other ancient cultures that may have had contact at one point in the very ancient past. The first of these codices, the Dresden Codex, contains accurate astronomical tables, including detailed Venus and lunar tables. The lunar series has intervals correlating with eclipses, while the Venus tables correlate with the movements of the planet Venus, an important aspect of astrology. The codex also contains astrological tables and ritual schedules. The religious references show in a cycle of a 200-day ritual calendar the important Maya royal events. The codex also includes information on the Maya New Year ceremony tradition. The rain god Chalk is represented 134 times. About 65% of the pages in the Dresden Codex contain richly illustrated astronomical tables. These tables focus on eclipses, equinoxes and solstices, the sidereal cycle of Mars, and the synodic cycles of Mars and Venus. These observations allowed the Mayans to plan the calendar year, agriculture, and religious ceremonies around the stars. In the text, Mars is represented by a long-nosed deer and Venus is represented by a star. <clears throat> Page 51 through 58 are eclipse tables. These tables accurately predicted solar eclipses for 33 years in the 8th century. Icons of serpents devouring the sun symbolize eclipses throughout the book, making eclipses a major focus of the Dresden Codex. The first 52 pages of the Codex are about divination. The Mayan astronomers would use this for daykeeping, but also determine the cause of sickness and other misfortunes. Though a wide variety of gods and goddesses appear in the Dresden Codex, the moon goddess is the only neutral figure. In the first 23 pages of the book, she's mentioned more than any other god. Second Codex, the Madrid Codex, is the longest of the surviving Maya codices. The content of the Madrid Codex mainly consists of almanacs and horoscopes that were used to help Mayan priests in the performance of their ceremonies and divinatory rituals. The Codex also contains astronomical tables, although fewer than the other ones. A close analysis of the glyphic elements suggests that a number of scribes were involved in its production perhaps as many as eight or nine, who produce consecutive sections of the manuscript. The religious content of the Codex makes it likely that the scribes themselves were members of a priesthood. The Codex was probably passed down from priest to priest, and each priest who received the book added a section of his own hand. The images in the Madrid Codex depict rituals such as human sacrifice, invoking rainfall, as well as everyday activities such as beekeeping, hunting, warfare, and weaving. Other images show deities smoking cigar similar to modern cigars made of tobacco leaves, and they would fill this with cannabis or tobacco. The Paris Codex is mainly ritual in nature, and one side of the Codex contains the patron deities and associated rituals for a cycle of 13 katoons, a 20-year Mayan calendrical cycle. One fragment contains animals that represent astronomical signs along the ecliptic, including a scorpion and a peccary. Fragments of this Maya zodiac are depicted on two pages of the Codex. Some pages of the Codex are marked with annotations made with Latin characters. Each page also contains the Aja day glyph combined with a numerical coefficient, in each case representing a date marking the final day of the calendrical cycle. In spite of the poor state of preservation of the document, enough text has survived to demonstrate that in the case of the Paris Codex, the main series of dates corresponding to the Katoon endings, allowing for a reconstruction of some lost date glyphs in the text. The seated figures are each associated with a side reel glyph, indicating that they represent the ruling deity of each katoon. The reverse of the codex is more varied in nature and includes a section dedicated to a calendrical cycle ruled by Chalk, the god of rain. It also includes information about the prognostication of rainfall and maize crop yields, as well as information about spiritual forces. A set of two pages illustrates the days of the Tolkien 260 day cycle that correspond to the beginning of the solar year over a period of 52 years. The final two pages of the Codex depict a series of 13 animals that represent the so-called Zodiac. Modern studies of the Codex have concluded that the end of the Zodiac cycle, illustrated within it, show a psychological predilection to Mayan fatalism, suggesting that the end of the Mayan classic period was a result of a self-fulfilling prophecy. The fourth and final Codex is the Mexico Codex. It is missing several pages, but we do still have ten pages. Page one depicts the god Cahuil who takes a captive. Page two depicts a death god god most commonly known as Kimi among the Maya. The deity of page 3 is not easily identifiable, but the blackened eyes of the captive are similar to those seen in the Dresden Codex. Kawil repeats on page 4. Page 5 features a version of the solar deity wearing a mask from the early post-classic Maya period. This sun god sets the temple in front of him afire with a dart launched from his atlatl. Another death god appears on page 6. He wields a massive knife and has decapitated another deity that he holds by the hair. 
The death deity has a jagged flint blade in his nasal cavity, similar to a depiction at the Temple of the Warriors in Chichen Itza. The enigmatic deity of page 7 stands in front of a shining tree. His headdress is very close to the headdress worn by the five deities in the Vaticanus B, Venus passages. And this may further link him to the god of the morning star in central Mexico. Page 8 has been identified as a buried deity with some serpent qualities. Although sometimes identified as a maze deity, the page 9 god is a craggy mountain deity or personified mountain from which a maze kernel or maze god would emerge. Similar to a representation discovered at Tonka in 1974. Page 10 has a depiction of the third and final skeletal death deity. The deity has launched an adelatal dart into the body of the water to strike at gastropod. Two more pages would have followed these ten to complete the Venus cycle recorded in the surviving pages. As you can tell from these texts, the Mayans had an extremely advanced knowledge of the cycles in our solar system and built a complex religion and tradition system around it. Every movement in the heavens had some kind of meaning or symbolism to the Mayans. Much like astrology today, the Mayans used advanced charts and maps to do things like influence fate and predict the future. Their way of life was so incredibly complex and intertwined with the stars and planet movements that it can seem primitive and foreign to us, but in reality they had a better understanding of our universe than many modern civilizations. This type of religion and astrological practice that the Mayans followed was similar to some of the oldest religions on earth like shamanistic cultures we find across the world, as well as early animistic religions. I always found it weird how connected some of these cultures are despite being separated by tens of thousands of miles. We're told that the Mayan civilization goes as far back as 2600 BC, but it's likely they began in some form long before that. We're not exactly sure of their origins, but the Aztecs say that they, along with the Mayans and the other Mesoamerican nations, came from a place they called Aztlan. This was a great city in the middle of a huge lake that was north of their homes in Mexico and Central America, but we don't know its exact location. This would make a lot of sense that they're descended from an earlier culture to the north because the archaeological record tells us that the DNA we find in the natives of the Americas largely comes from a group that migrated here across the Bering Strait from Siberia and Mongolia roughly 30,000 years ago. When the last ice age came and wiped out most of these people in the northern regions about 13,000 years ago, they were forced to migrate south to warmer regions, possibly carrying the remnants of their original animistic astrological religion with them, leading to the similarities we see in both sides of the globe. But that's just one theory. There are also other theories that the Mesoamericans are descended from the people of the sunken city of Atlantis, and many connections can be made there. For one, the Aztec homeland, Aztlan, phonetically is very similar to Atlantis, as many point out. The answer could have possibly been in those lost texts. So why did the Spanish try to erase every last one of them? What did they contain? Did they have secret histories of the Mayans' connection with Atlantis, or other early civilizations, possibly the Phoenicians, or even the Vikings? We may never know. The monks who held these book burnings claimed they contained satanic practices and rituals. What exactly were these practices? In the Bible, the Israelites were ordered to destroy anything that the Canaanites had that represented their god Baal. The Canaanites, also later known as the Phoenicians, were a satanic force as the Israelites saw it. Were the Spanish acting on what they thought was the will of God to destroy Baal? Could these texts have contained evidence of a connection to some of these very ancient cultures that the Spanish wanted to hide? The Spanish were gatekeepers of knowledge. Anything to do with outer space and astrology was grounds for heresy. I think the Mayans may have had an even more advanced understanding of our universe than we think. They could have even had evidence for other planets that contained life. The Mayans were an extremely ancient civilization, one of the first to create a government system in the Americas. But where did they learn this knowledge? The hunter-gatherers of North America certainly didn't teach them, even if they did interbreed. The Aztecs and Mayans have a tradition of a teacher god that came and brought them the gift of civilization and organization and taught them all the knowledge they had in these texts. We find a similar story all over the world, and many say this teacher god was a remnant of a lost civilization like Atlantis. Was this what the Spanish were trying to destroy? Advanced knowledge from Atlantis? Could the early Canaanites and later North African people that the Spanish were also burning their knowledge also be connected with this Atlantean knowledge? There certainly are parallels in their religions. If we had the rest of these Mayan texts, we could know for sure. Those texts could have contained secrets to our universe that we still don't understand. Some say these contain predictions of our future and possibly even the end of the world. Some say they contain super advanced maps of our psyche that were created by priests who would venture into the spirit realm through psychedelic experiences and map what they saw there. Other theories say their gods may have been real spirit beings they would converse with through these psychedelics, and the Spanish destroyed the text because it had knowledge of how to reach these beings. These theories are not all that far-fetched when you take into consideration the Mayans' worldview and the way they lived their lives, especially the priest class. These could have been some of the oldest texts on earth dating back to the origin of the Mayans, or at least being derived from those older texts. 
We simply do not know. But the good news is that more texts may have survived and could still be out there. Some locals claim to have them here and there, but they're left unverified by officials. Lost cities and underwater ruins also still could contain missing hieroglyphs and knowledge, so the answers we seek may still be out there. There are many possibilities when it comes to such an advanced and intriguing people like the Mayans. Hopefully someday, more information will come to light, but for now, we can only speculate. That's all I have for you on the Mayans today. There's much more to talk about them, though. I feel like we've only scratched the surface here. Thank you if you made it to the end of the video. I'm a new channel, so I really appreciate the support. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. I always love to hear different theories and perspectives down there. This has been Tales of the Old World. See you next time, and thank you for watching.